Hello and welcome back to the finish line, proudly sponsored by Hollywood West, the home of the Punters Challenge, which our next one is on Friday the 26th at Dundalk. So anyone that hasn't played yet, it's free to enter, free to play. You will find all the details in the description of this video of how to sign up and all your details for having a Hollywood Bets account. So check that out down below and get registered for in time for Friday. We all played as a load of lads in our WhatsApp group. Why did I say WhatsApp group? This WhatsApp group has gone mental since we said WhatsApp group. I'm not and anybody else. I have four numbers that I have to give to you that I got today. But see, the thing is, mean, about it is, you send me the number and there's no name on it. And then it goes in my phone as unknown. I've now unknown one, two, three, four, five. And there's two more I just didn't add because I'm not having six and seven. Like. What I'll give you the names then? Huh? What'd you say, Tom? Oh, no, there's now 88 people in the WhatsApp group. We're going to hit 100 soon. Yeah. Uh, Next and week. Then, and then the lads that are constantly talking in it are like, get rid of all the lurkers, because they're just in here and not saying anything. Yeah, if, if you do come and on, I'm you, you have to get involved I, in the banter. I must say, there was some other people joined it for the week of chatting. Just put in pictures of their slips and then fucked off. <laughs> <laughs> After booms all over the place. Oh, stop. Um, right, so people, uh, before we get started, we were meant to do our Cheltenham Festival anti-pose look back of all our ones, but we're going to leave that until Sunday. Dave came up with a good idea that people will want to interact with us, so we're going to keep that for the live show on Sunday uh, on Talking Points. And another announcement for more content. We, at the end, well, start the Tuesday or Wednesday after Punchestown. We are going to do Royal Ascot anti post videos. So that will be six weeks of Royal Ascot anti post videos. Uh, that'll bring us up to the week before Royal Ascot. And then we will do a live Royal Ascot preview the Sunday before. So it's an, look, it cuts down the weeks. It gives it a bit of interest. Look, it's the, it's the Cheltenham of the flat. So we said we'd give it a go. No one else seems to be doing it. So why not? The hell with it. It's going to take a lot of research. The Cheltenham ones are easy because you just. You know all the races and you know the horses. Ascot. Gold I've Cup. Who has picked a jump for Ascot already? I've once picked out for Ascot already. You've them, Dave. I couldn't I couldn't tell you who's running it. Who's going to run at Ascot? I've nobody in my mind that I'm like, that's going to run at Ascot. I, I, just want, I just want the Gold Cup and that two and a half mile race on the last day. Whatever jumps trainer is in it, I'm backing. I sat there and I, I enjoyed the car Sunday now. I was kind of wa I was watching more than back and then seeing who's trying and who's fit and who's not fit and who's hanging out the back to win the next day. So There was a lot hanging out the back to win the last day going on bloody distances. Any Good performance though. there? That? Any performance that caught your eye in that? Uh, no, it means horse was good. That won the Irish Lincoln. Hmm. There was a, a few in that that I will back probably later. I'll, you talk there. There was one I'll find that again. But the name well, escapes I'll, me. I'll make it easy for you. I didn't watch any of it. I think I watched the Lincolnshire or whatever the hell was on Cambridge or whatever the hell it was. I had zero interest in the first day in the flat up in Cora. I think I painted instead, which is not like me when there's decent horse racing on. But look, I, I'm not even getting into it properly until punch sound is over. After that, I'll start studying until Royal Ascot and Goodwood and so on and so forth. Um, but Tom, bit of bad news. Well, oh, you have a bit of bad news. I'm a stressed man the last uh, last few days now, I'll tell you. Um, horse, unfortunately, the horse we were talking about on Sunday's show unfortunately failed the vet. Um, so we've had to move on from there. And the good news is we think we found another one today. So... Um, that's getting vetted on Friday. So as I said to you, I don't want to say anything else or jinx it or anything. Um, but give the background one, of the horse. This horse has been placed in a couple of bumpers, and um, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's enough. She's a mare. She's been placed that in a couple was of bumpers. A horrible sell. Uh, let's let's get Friday out of the way. I just don't want to jinx it anymore. It's torture. 
And I got even more bad news. Is this what you're on about? What's the other bad news? Have we talked about this bad news? No, actually, <laughs> I need to backtrack on that. I'll send oh, you no, a on some stage. No, it's yeah. So no, that horse. Oh, there's just so many horses that you're trying, and they just don't work out for whatever reason. And it's just oh, so I know the other bad news. Is it about yeah. the? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we're not, not going to touch on that actually for just for now. But um, but no, yeah, it's uh, we found a horse now, and she's very nice. And let's hope Friday goes well. And she will win plenty of races. So. I think that's the first time you've ever said a horse will win races. This thing must be a weapon. Yeah, she's good. She's got Irish fun. So it's always, you come from France and you're like, right, okay, let's hope. Um, and we've seen with Shona that has worked out pretty well so far. She's run over here to a, above anything she's ever run in France. So, um, How is Shona, by the way? She's good. Place. She's she's enjoying her break. Um, she'll have another few weeks of a break, and then she'll be back in and ready to rock. She's only a light kind of a filly, so she doesn't take too much work to get ready. So, um, yeah, Ew, she'll having a Ew, having a pick of grass with a few Gold Cup winners, Champion Hurdle winners. Be mad, wouldn't it? It's it's just it's just insane. Um, yeah, we're we're lucky to be in there, really. Um, and this this one is, again will be to go to Henry. So. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. The stable tours are going to be interesting. Yeah, I think you're going to be saying to people, like, Oh, this is your horse here, and they're going to be, <laughs> cool, gone. yeah, where's Honeysuckle? I don't care. Where's Honeysuckle? honeysuckle. Where's Bye. Oh, yeah, that's my one. Bye. <laughs> well, look, Envoy Allen, what's the crack? <laughs> it's insane when you sit down. And I was saying on Sunday as well, like, a few people have texted me and said, Oh my god, Tom, I can't wait for the yard tours. And I think four or five people have said four or five different horses that they're looking forward to going to see. Um, mm. The firepower Henry has is just madness. But there we go. Anyway, hopefully more news on Sunday. <laughs> Good news. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, so, right. So, go on. What's the horse? You... There, there was a few things from the Cora on Sunday. The, the main horse that ran was uh, Joan of Arc. She was odds on in O'Brien in horse, but she'd have a chance in the 1,000 guineas, whether the Irish or the English. She's a sister to Marvellous, Happily, Glen Eagles. They all won group ones. Um, Jim Bulger's first string in the first race is by Australia, running over five furlongs, would have never suited, ran a really nice race. Freedom of speech, I reckon that'll win the next time. Um, there was a horse called Valhalla's Dream, ran really well from the front in the other maiden, that the three-year-old maiden, I think that Aidan O'Brien's horoscope won, looked like he was going to win, um, just got caught late, I right, keep an eye on that for handicaps, and then just Michael Mulvaney's horses, they all ran well, but just didn't finish out the last four long, give it a two or three weeks, and he'll have a load of winners, I'd say. Do you know those those perp, those pink and green kind of squares? Hmm. The thing that won the maiden, the two-year-old maiden, is a weapon. Is it won by like four and a half lengths or something? Yeah, it was Jim Bulger's second string. Um, looked very, very well. I, if you looked at the pedigree now, it's much of a muchness. The other horse is a better pedigree, but Jim Bulger's kind of goes for good horses to win that race. I'd say the two two horses you had in there are, are good horses. No way, that's random. It's actually it's a half brother to um a horse a, a few lads I used to I know used to own called Miracle Cure. Which was a jumper. So he loves that sort of vocalise. Not many other people lo like him, but he, he loves him. Yeah, yeah. Let me know when you're finished you're going for a nap. <laughs> Uh, there's a few good things there now. Uh, I enjoyed watching it Sunday. Crap, I was not I was going to say, biggest, biggest I was gonna say can, we, can we stop talking about the flat? But every single race today is about the flat. Come on, the flat. Oh, I have to like the flat now. I have I to enjoy that. That Val Valhalla's dream is by Morpheus. Remember Morpheus? I think he's in relation to Frankel. He wasn't that much good on the at winning races, but he became a sire because he's a. Uh, his brothers to some good horses. He's a good sire, though. Yeah. 
Um, gives a bit of a bit of speed in him, I think. Yeah, yeah, he does. Right, Andrew, let's crack on to a full flat card at Maidan. We just wasted like five minutes on Cora. <laughs> oh, right. Well, uh, saying that now, the winner of the first. Doncaster, two o'clock. The, the Doncaster Mile Stakes is a list of race over a mile. And the prices of, of uh, as of now on Hollywood Bits is Bounce the Blues is 10 to 3. Uh, top rank is 7 to 2. Uh, Montatum is fours, Space Traveler is fives, Father of Jazz is six, Stormy Antarctic is eight, and ten to one bigger the rest. Dino Dave, D Dave has his name as Dino Dave in this, so he's now going to be referred as Dino Dave. Who is people going to win? People don't believe it because people don't believe it because they can't see it. I'll show him. I'll show him. One second now. Or, or maybe not. It just didn't come up. What? No, it didn't come up. But anyway, go on. <laughs> What's this? What the hell is going on? Oh, um, oh it's. It, I, I'm in a huge bit of big slump right now. <laughs> right, as, on, with, um, as with all flat race that start the season, it's very, very hard. Oh, you don't. Go mad back and things until maybe a month in. I think Tom even said that he's going to take a month off and just let things form and that play out. But I would be going for Montatum. He's that nearly white horse in the Shandam Al Maktoum colours. Um, he came second in Royal Ascot last year. If you remember, he was on the wrong side of the track, came all the way over and just got beaten by uh, a Godolphin horse. I'd forgive him his last run last year and I'd go for him. Tom, who are you going for? Oh, this could get boring very fast now. Um, yeah, I, I'm with my Taffin as well. Um, just a side note there as well. His owner passed away, didn't he, today? So, um, he did. That's a, that's a shame. It's a massive loss. Like They're such a huge organisation. They're just absolute, like absolutely massive organisation. and The money that it must take to run that must be phenomenal. So, um, yeah thoughts with his family um and hopefully they want to continue um be a big loss if if if, if that organization was to go mm. uh, i'm sure i'm sure they'll want to continue that hopefully um but yes this look matafam has won on both his his starts after breaks um as dave says he's very good at royal ascot let's forget about his last run and um he's got a hell of a chance really i think I think four to one is a is a fair price to be honest. Um, I'm going with top rank. I I like this horse. Um, he's <laughs> he's won first time out in all the starts, and he won first time out last season on the back of 307 day break, and he won by easy four and a half lengths. Uh, he was then uh, lent behind Mutatum, who was who the two lads just put up. But then he went on to win a group three, beating my Oberon by a length and a half. And then he was uh, five and a half lengths, six of six behind Cameco at Newmarket in, on his last run. I think he's a really strong stayer. He he was one on good ground. He's one on soft ground. So there's no worries in the ground. I just, I think he, he's he's a horse that you hit first time out. He's good form. He's he's going to be ready to go. And I think he's a strong steer over a mile and Don Carson is a stiff enough mile. So I think he, he could be hard to be. I think he's seven to two at the moment. So he'll be the one inside man. And I think he's, I know I, I say, I don't really like the flat, but I think he's one of the, one of my main bets for the weekend. I, I think he'll take a hell of a lot of beating in this. I know he has a length to find on, on your one, but I think he'll he's do it. He's a nice horse as well. He's a nice horse. Hmm. Right, moving on. This is going to be fun because I have no idea how to say half these names. This is the problem. This is another problem with the flat. I have no idea how you pronounce these Al Maktoun horses, the Sheikh Fahad, these Ali. Just why you like? Oh, one second. I just get it. That's just not average. Like, I had to ask Dave how to say one of these things. And if it's wrong, it's all Dave's fault. It's not wrong. <laughs> Uh, where the hell is it? Sorry, no. Right. So the Unibet Lincoln. 
Um, it's over a mile and it's a heritage handicap and the prices are ah, this thing is I'm trying to kill time now because my cre- screen is just frozen <laughs> and we're back uh, Eastern World is 10 to 3 favourite Hakiki according to Dave is 7 to 2 Brentford Hope is 13 to 2 King Ottercar is 9s River Nymph is 9s uh, Danya is 11s bunch of 16s and 18 to 1 bigger the rest uh, this is always a huge heart hugely hard race to get the winner off but I think there's a horse lurking here on a lovely mark that could be well above his mark and he's getting a lovely seven pounds off but what do you think go on Dave the, the people <laughs> want to hear from you here not me I'm going to stick with what I, I put up with last year um, he let me down his last race of the season again but I'd always be willing to forgive that at the end of the se- uh, end of the season He's a four-year-old now, still a colt, so there's obviously a reason for that. It's Clive Cox's horse, River Nymph. Um, I I remember you back so many times. He's won handicaps in big fields as well, uh, um, I think at Newmark at Nascot. And then he just bombed out the last day, but I give him a chance. I hope that Adam Corby's not jumping up and down on him, though, but sure, look. Well, you hope that, but it's going to happen. I know, yeah. <laughs> well, he's if he's in... on the bridle and you don't need that, then it'll be great. He has the weirdest riding style I've ever came across in my whole life. He's strong, but odd. And bust, bust the horse's back. It can't be good for him. Seems to work, doesn't it? He's like a bloody buck and bronco on the thing. Do you ever see them mechanical bulls? Or, you know... <laughs> Brentford, Brentford Hope will either be a Spencer masterclass because the horse will want to do it and Spencer won't have to do anything or he'll be last. That's the kind of horse he is. Ah, so gosh, it wouldn't answer. be for me. Yeah. Tom, who are you going for on this? Um, it's a bloody <laughs> pretty race, isn't it? Um, the, the, kind of leaning towards the head of the market, but I don't like the favourite Eastern world. Um, is a very very short price based on what he's done in the UK. Now I know he was obviously very good at Maidan last time out. He could have just come on for the gelding operation. Um, and look, he could be thrown in. Um, Brentford Hope. I just have it in my head. He wants soft ground. Um, yeah. I wouldn't knock Dave's River Nymph too much, although he is a lot higher in the handicap than when he was last seen um, winning one. King, o- King Ottica is another horse I have a little soft spots for, and I've followed him over a cliff at this stage. Um, again, he's probably not going to win. Um, yeah, he, he's, he's probably not going to win, but I, I'd have him in the first four or five. The one I'm going to go for, I just think is glaringly obvious at the minute, is Hakiki, if that's how Dave says you say We're it. We're going with that. I think that's how you say it anyway. Yeah, we'll go with Hakiki anyway. Um, John Gosden trained, obviously. Um, he's not afraid of we're running one in the handicap, you know, even if he thinks they're a proper group horse. Um, this lad, he's he's only really one blot in his copybook, and he had a 60 day, 61 day break after that. Um, he got bumped in that race, and I, I just write it off. He came back at Doncaster then and was very good over seven furlongs. Um, he won really impressively that day. He's up to 100 now. That was off 92. He's up to 100 now. Um, and he's got Benoit on him. I don't know. Benoit de la Sayet. That's not oh, too bad. Well, that's played. not too bad, is it? Benoit well, de la Sayet. Yeah. Um, taking seven pounds off. And as I think everyone has seen, he's a bit like Jordan Gainford over the jumps. Like he's robbing seven pounds. Mm-hmm. So that brings that horse down to 93. Um, I just think he's thrown in really. Um, surely he's going to be ready to go, and yeah, I, I, I just think he's glaringly obvious at the top of the market. Yeah, I'm on the same, same kind of page. I think it's 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 so obvious that it's is it nearly too good to be true? Like as you say, like it, the only blot on his copybook was was the ra- his race before last where he was. Tenth of tenth beaten eleven and a half lengths, but he had a horrible passage through the race. He bolted up over seven furlongs then over this course. 
um, last September. And he's had to be in Gellert since. I think he's just a hell of, he's he's a lot better than his rating here. And I think the, the seven pounds that Ben Moore has taken off him is daylight robbery. He gets in then off eight stone ten. He's down to mark of ninety three when you consider this the claim off him. So that really puts him one pound higher than his last win. I think it's it's a clear passage. I can I can't see him being beat. I'm I, tempted to break my uh, break my no gambling for a month rule for him. To be honest, well, that didn't last long, did it? <laughs> a whole lot. We it were it treat, actually, we're it, lasted, it lasted until today. I hope Siobhan's not listening. So uh, we'll find out if she's listening now. Anyway. <laughs> oh no, we're not live. Oh, you, you have seen if this was live, you'd have seen someone coming through the door. Yeah, but um, there's usually a group horse lurking in here that will win it, or two group horses, or three. I think him and River Nymph are the ones that could end up being like group two, group three horses. So I wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be putting people off that horse either, the John Gosling horse. Andrew, what price is he with Hollywood bets? He is. I don't know what I guess. He is ten to three. It's fair. He's as short. He's as short as five to two elsewhere, and he's best price seven to two. So, yeah, one hundred thirty is uh, is a very fair price. And hold up, nope, two seconds. Uh, we have a bookmaker as well, and I'm not just saying this because there's there are a sponsor. But um, thirty one hundred euro. <laughs> <laughs> I hope uh, I hope people are finding it this way as well. Like you can you can get a fairly decent sized bet on with them. You can, like yeah, we've done few and there's been no restrictions on us yet. Look, and they're going to they're, there's no reason why they're not going to restrict us yeah. just because they're sponsoring us. They're still some a them, so let's make some a of them are, Some of them are just a joke though. Even when you open an account, you're you're restricted very very quickly. Even I, on your first, like even on your first bet that you might not be able to have much on, but there, I remember um, I opened I opened an account with oh, I can't even remember I think it was Unibet or someone like that. Um, I went to have twenty each way on uh I think it was twelve to one shot and they give me five each way on it, the ten or max on it, and I was like right, ret- <laughs> take out my money. That account is not happening anymore. Like I didn't have a bet on this on any other race before that. Like yeah. That's ridiculous. They don't take bets the same way as the train, the same way as the trainer they sponsor don't run as horses. Oh, oh well played. Oh, oh I need to get a soundboard where stand and ovation claps and everything for this. <laughs> so true, like. Um, right, fine selections. Hakiki for me. I think he, he's probably my nap of the weekend. Just gave it away, but anyway. Yeah, I'd I'd take a hiki, hakiki as well. Which was right in the game, Tom? What's the jockey's name, Tom? Benoit de la Sayet. Oh, well played. Whisper that in Siobhan's ear tonight now. You'd be an onto a winner. Benoit <laughs> is such a class name, isn't it? Benoit. Onto an absolute hiding. <laughs> <laughs> she killed me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. On to oh, good old six four on list of sprint. And the betting is... We Surely have... there's got to be like a free runner novice chase around Catherick or something. <laughs> nah, we'll, uh, one horse walk over for Dan Skelton again. Oh, That'll do. Freebies. And they're giving out why English horses are, are, are not competitive at Cheltenham. There's one of your case in points. Walk over for a race. Jesus Christ. I don't think I've... Uh, since, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I can't remember that happening in Ireland the last five years at the least. It's a strange one. It normally happens when there's a protest about prize money and the trainers say, I remember this happened a, a few years ago and the trainers were saying like, okay, don't run your horse and we're going to have a walkover like there's a protest about prize money. I've never seen it that, you know, on a Saturday as well, it was the most random thing I've ever seen, to be honest. The Saturday after Cheltenham as well. Like. Mm. Anyway, oh. on to this. We have Nahar um, at 11 to 4. Good old Brando at 10 to 3. Summer Gand, come to my hand, 11 to 2. Just Frank at 6s. Uh, Emirati, Anna 
at eights, Mr. Limpton at tens, Tis Marathlet at tens, and 14 to one, bigger the rest. Dave, you love these little sprint handicaps. It's not even a handicap, list of races. Pick I do, but loads, loads of these just don't want to win. Like Brando <laughs> will run terrible here, and he'll run second or third in a great a group one later. Even not in the, the group race. one match. Uh, Nahar, I suppose, is a decent horse. Uh, he's won more than others. The Summering Hand, another one that runs fairly well in those big handicaps. And to be honest, some of those six furlong and five furlong handicaps are they're the same level as the sprinters in the graded races anyway. Um, I don't know. Mr. Lupton's another one. Uh, he'll win a race here and there, but he is placed more than he wins. Uh, I was thinking Chief of Chiefs each way, and I was going to give Les Ayers' horse, Just Frank, the three-year-old, a shot. Getting away, but it'll probably be hard for a three-year-old to win against the season kind of sprinters, but him and Chief of Chiefs each way. Tom, I know, like, even if we go back to Champion Stakes, on that farm alone, Brando should piss up in this, but he's just not going to. Yeah, he, he, won't, he won't win, he's though. He's not going to. Like is I think is he hasn't won in his last twelve starts and I think he's only won two in his last twenty two. That just tells you how much of a shy talk he is. Tom agrees. Tom just said no is, interest yeah. in this race whatsoever. I, I don't know. I didn't know you were coming to me now. I I just I don't know about this race. Every time I try and find one that I'm getting clever with, I feel they're useless. Um I just don't. I just don't know. Like Brando, God, this is gonna. This is gonna be Brando's best chance for a long, long time to go win a race. Um, you know, will it? Will he do it? Probably won't. No. Will he? Um, the one. Okay, the one I'm gonna throw up at a wide price um, is trained by Charlie Fellows um, and is out of Danvers. Um, Chief of Chiefs. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw him up. Uh, ran one first time out last year on good ground, six furlongs. Um, is rated above the hundred. If that was on a going day, it's it's one fresh before as well. Um, if that's on a going day, it's got a chance. It's fourteen to one. Save your money for the Lincoln. <laughs> I was looking at this this morning and I was thinking, why in the name of God have I put this in? It's probably... Do you know what's easier to get the winner off? It was probably not. But I was going to say the Boodles is easier to get the winner off. <laughs> but, um... um look, th- Thomas has to agree with my each way and the other, the three-year-old is getting a stone and he will leave. So if he goes really, really fast, he might just stay out there. This is the what I looked at. I was looking at it, I think there's going to be an awful lot of pace in this. So I was going through a few of them who will be kind of held up off the pace. And Summer, Summer and Grand, or whatever the hell his name is. Summering Summer Gand. Hand. Summering Hand. There's no ING. That just throws you off all day. Summer Gand, I think, isn't it? I don't know. There's a G in it as well. David O'Mara's horse. <laughs> um, he, he's, going, he's fit already from uh, a few spins around the all-weather. He was... Very unlucky the last time. I went back and looked at his race. He lost his position at a vital stage and he flew home. Uh, He was only beaten like uh, three quarters of a length. This is going to be ran at a good clip. He's race fish. He's going to be in the right place for to have a challenge at this and he flies home. So look at 11 to 2. Back him each way. I won't back anything to win in this. But he's my idea of the winner and one who I do like, Tis Marvelous. He, He loves that got that Beverly bullet. So when he just don't mind whatever he does, he's going to be plot for that because he's an absolute speed freak from the front around there. Uh, so yeah, summering and I'll have a bit of him at 11 to 2. Oh, enough of that. Right. Over to Abby Dabby Dabby Do. I'm off to me then. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have to make it some sort of entertaining, don't I? Tom's <laughs> <laughs> gone. I'm going to make a cup of tea half an hour for Tom is back. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I can't believe he just said that. Oh, my God. Wow. 
Can we, can we mate? I'd like to go to Dubai someday. Can we not ruin all relations before? <laughs> you do realize that's going to be a meme now for a long time. Abba 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 Flintstone. <laughs> We're going on a horse's back. <laughs> ah, I'll quit while I'm ahead now. So we're never going to make wow. that. <clears throat> uh, right. It's as long as we don't start any like kidnap jokes or anything like that, we'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> I think that now see, I just had a joke and you just took it to the next level as always, and I'm not editing this out, so just shut up. <laughs> Dino, oh, Dino Davis signing off. This is like pennies all over again. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're lucky you said that. I was gonna go with do you remember the time I said no, it? About, no, oh, no, 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 no. Side 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 side. Side. How the hell do I mute mute, mute yeah. his microphone? Mute. Mute. <laughs> I can't as well. <laughs> How do I mute his microphone? Oh god. Oh. Um, where are we? I have the graphics up. <laughs> Run away to Dubai, apparently. Whether oh. whether we come back from Dubai is a different thing. Oh, we yabba dabba do. <laughs> all right here we go here we go breed Dubai Gold Cup over two miles so the betting is as of now secret advisor is 7 to 4 favourite subject uh, subjectivist is 11 to 4 Spanish Moon is 5s Global Heat 10s Volcanic Sky is 10s Red Verdon is 10s and it's 11 to 1 bigger the rest and these are my kind of races but lads who is going to win this and this is another one who I think is going to absolutely smash him to pieces from the front. Subjectivist. Move Damn. on. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of the same. Um, he's getting an allowance. Um, you know, he's gone okay on good ground before. And, um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd give him a chance. He's still pretty unexposed at real proper staying trips. He's yeah, only only, been... yeah. Go on, so sorry, go on. Yeah, it's only fourth start at a mile six or further, and he's won three of those. So um, yeah, I'm I'm happy with him in this. Yeah, I t he's won my best bets of the weekend. He's to me, he's by and far the best horse in this race. Even go back through his form, he a half length behind Mogul in the group three. Uh, he was beat by Hookham off ninety four in, in King George the, the fifth handicap, <laughs> like seventh in the Saint Ledger. Seventh in the Saint Ledger. Uh, Mogul was won then at Longchamp beaten in Swoop who was then second in the arc so there's, there's form there already like he was behind, he was behind Pearl Driver Highland Chief and Mogul Berkshire Royal who was second in the St. Leisure um, like the, the form is ridiculous he's stepping up a trip which I think is going to be a huge thing for him he's getting an allowance I would be shocked if he doesn't go off favours. The only worry to have is race fitness, but they won't be bringing him the whole way over to Maidan if he wasn't fit. So I think he'll go out in front, he'll gallop him into the ground, and I think 11 to 4 is a cracking price for him. He's, I think he's a lot better than the rest of these. And this, the rest of them are kind of much of a much as they beat each other year in, year out. He's the up and comer, and I think he's going to play a hand in a lot of the staying races this year. So we're all on the subjectivist train. I couldn't believe the price of him when I seen him. Like I know Spanish, um, the favorite has at the having a run already, and he's has fitness over him. But he talent will just get him through, and he'll win. No, yeah, that's three. So he's definitely going to be, get beat with the three of us backing him. Moving on, uh, the group one sprint over six furlongs. Uh, and the betting is why does this always anytime I go to change it it just dodgy oh. wifi it is it, you know, the wifi is my phone there oh, you Tom, go Tom do you have it in front of you because this is just not working for me yes so Space Blues 11 to 8 Final Song 6 to 1 Kadim 6 to 1 Equilateral 13 to 2 Moth at a wit, ten to one. Royal Crusade, sixteen to one. Extravagant Kid, eighteen to one. Twenty to one. Bar those. She may as well keep going. What you want me to read the rest of that? Half a fact, say no. Cameron. As in, as in, keep going with just election. Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. <sighs> um, 
amateurism working. Something tells me here to take on Space Blues. I don't think the drop back in trip is going to help this horse. He may still win uh, because he, he could be a good bit better than some of these, but I don't think the drop back to six is going to help him at all, especially on better ground. Mm -hmm. um, at, an eight, at 11 to eight, I'm keen to take him on. The one I'm going to take him on with is Caddy. Um, second last year, in, oh, sorry, fourth in two uh, group one sprints last year at Ascot and Newmarket. I think that form is going to stand up pretty well here. And that was over six furlongs. He's an out and out six furlong horse. And he didn't he didn't win first time out last season. He was fourth in a in a group one, only beating the length from three quarters. But he did win first time out the season before that. So um yeah, he, he's the one for me to take a chance on a six to one. Good Dave, who are you going with? Uh, I agree with Tom. Space blue is <sighs> His form is all over seven furlongs and he won the Morris de Geest over six and a half, but it wasn't until the last half furlong that he actually started kicking in the afterburners and that. Um, he could be just have to turn the corner now and knows how to win, but I think the most talented horse is Kadim and I'd go for him as well. He travel like the best horse anyway, whether he puts it all in is another story, but he travels always like the best horse in the race and to me, he was always going to win a grade one eventually or a group one eventually. So. Um, I'm taking on Space Blues as well. O on the same fact that all his all of his formers, uh, all of his best formers over seven furlongs. Uh, I'm going to take him on with a kind of horse that's who's coming in here in nice form. It's uh, Muta Fatwit. Whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> Muta Fatwit. It is. Muta Fatwit. The one horse in that list that I struggled with, and you've tipped it. Like, it's just because you, you you try and pronounce all of them in separate sentences that it sounds so bad. I'm trying to break Muta it Fawit. down. Go back to primary school. Yeah. Take that word and just put a lot of line there and put it all together. Then, Mutafawit. That one. Uh, number six. <laughs> uh, look, he he's been in very good form. He won a big handicap at Maidan or five furlongs. Uh, absolutely bolted up at 33 to 1. He followed up then with a very solid run. Uh, he was he won the first race off 93. He went up to 100 and 103, stepped up to six furlongs and was flying at the finish. He was at the wrong side of the track, all the paces on the other side. He was kind of left out on his own. Um, he flew at the finish. So I think the six furlongs is no trouble to him whatsoever. Um, he, he, I just liked the way he was going about. And I like these kind of sprinter when you're looking at sprinters that just. They're coming into good form because they kind of keep taking it on. And he's an up-and-comer. Look, he did have a, a, a good break uh, about, I think, a year and a half ago. He was off for 259 days. He came back to Abu Dhabi and he was beaten seven lengths. He had another 69 days off and that's when his form started kicking in. He's course form, which is always a help around here. And I think he'll get enough pace to aim at. He'll get a nice bit of coverage. And I think he'd be flying at the finish. I think he's 10 to 1. So I think he could run a huge race. So he'd be the one I, I'd be taking on against Space Blues. Um, Tom's just got to get in the text off the vest. Sorry, Tom. He's gone again. <laughs> Jesus. I'm trying to get a bet on, actually, to be honest. I was just breaking my rule. Um, I want to back... Uh, I want to back subjectivist and um, Hakiki. I'm not betting for a month. One podcast, two bets. <laughs> he said, after Cheltenham, I'm stopping for a month. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Five days. I'll break my rules for Hakiki. <laughs> I'll break my rules for Hakiki. Subjectivist will win too. I'll back him as well. i wait, wait till the next one. He backed him with one in the next as well. I'll probably back some in the next as well. But anyway. <laughs> I like, uh, the, I like the World Cup meeting at Maidan. It's, it's good. I, it's on my bucket list. I'd love to go. I'd love to go as well. The grandstand and the track look ridiculous. Uh, right. To the boy turf, one mile, one furlong. And the betting is uh, good old Lord Glitters is 5 to 2, giant favour with Lord North. Al Shuhal is 7 to 2. Regal Reality is 8. Ectrian is 8. And 12 to 1, bigger the rest. Why? What's with all the names? 
Ekteran. I was close enough. Jesus Arabic. Christ. Do you not know Arabic? No. I barely know English. <laughs> yeah, that's something we won't debate anyway. No. <laughs> but Dave, who wins the Dubai turf? I'd say Al Suhail will be primed to the minute. He's already had a, a prep race. Lord Glitter's bet him, but I fancy him to turn around the form. Charlie Appleby will try and have them all ready to get a couple of winners on Dubai World Cup night. So, the good Dolphin horse. As you had, okay. Tom, who are you going with? Yeah, I, I actually on Al Suhail as well. I, I give him a good chance. Um, Lord North is just one of those... I don't know. I just never quite warmed him. Um, Lord Glitters has been in fantastic form out there, but you would think there's something better than him in this field to beat him, you know? Mm -hmm. um, hopefully he runs his race again. He's run absolutely fantastic for connections out there. Um, yeah, I would just go with Al Suhail. Um, some of that four back form is good, and he was extremely impressive uh, a couple of times, um, especially on his run after the Guineas. And, um, yeah, no, nice little prep run and, and ready to rock, I think. I was looking at this, and it was it was another. This is kind of it's too obvious, but is it really? I think Lord North just wins this. He's miles clear on ratings. He's he's probably coming into this in the best form he ever was last season. He was last seen when he was um, second behind Ternawa, who was going to win the the arc this year, by the way. Um, and Magical and Mogul um, was Mogul was in this race as well, or he was actually fourth. Sorry, fourth, and, and Magical was in front of him in that. But I think, I think he's a lot better than a lot of these. He's a good record, fresh. Um, yeah, look, I think it's just he's the best horse in the race, and he'll win. He won last time out, his first time out last season. He was second the year before that. And he won his, on his first race, and then after 192 breaks, day break, he won again. So I think John Gosling is going to have him ready to run a very good race. Look, I know five to two is short enough when you're taking fitness into account, but I think he'd be hard to be. Look, as Tom said, Lord Glitters is two from three over this season. He's been in unbelievable form. He'll give it one hell of a, a shot as well. The track seems to suit his running style, and he'd be running on it to finish. Whether he's good enough against um these kind of horses i think ashu hal will turn around a farm with him but i think it's between the two of them but i want to side with lord north at five to two now second last one we're on wait, to wait until we get to the last one and the names of the last one we just get through the Shima Classic first before I dread going near this. <laughs> I was oh look, I can't find a bet in Tom. Will you get it there? Uh right, Shima Classic. Uh Miss Riff, who who won the um Saudi Cup is two to one. It's this Japanese horse Trono Genesis. Trono Genesis. Trono Genesis. Ah yeah. It's eleven to four. Good old fat mogul is three to one. Uh, Walter Street is sevens and eight to one. Bigger the rest. Dave is this big bull of a. Oh, I don't know what to call him anymore. Just a big fat lovable rogue mogul. Uh, what chances would if, you give him in this? If mogul is fit, he'll win. He's the most talented horse in the race. But whether he's fit is another story. He might not be fit till August. So he could be waiting a while from the winner race. But uh, if he's fit, he'll win. And Roy Moore is actually riding great the last couple of weeks. So, so that yes or no? Oh yeah. <laughs> All aboard the mogul bandwagon. Yeah. Well, you, I say bandwagon. Look, you, you know when the um, you know in the parade ring because you know how fat he is. But he always looks fat though. Mm. Tom Hugo, who wins for you? Um. Tr tricky race. I'm surprised they're actually going for this with Mishriff and they're not going for the Dubai World Cup. Um, you know, they're stepping up to a mile four here. They, they clearly think that that's what he wants. Um, 
yeah, I mean, he, he's got to have a hell of a chance. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm just surprised. I, I thought after he proved himself last day on the dirt that they would they would stick to it and, and go for the the Dubai World Cup. But um, as Dave says, yeah, like if if Mogul's fit, he's got a hell of a chance here. He's another horse. I just I just can't work out. Um, the day he bolted up over uh, under Pierre Charles Budo at Longchamp, you know, he looked like the next the next big thing again. Um, and then he's gone and run okay uh, in the Breeders Cup, and, and then he's won at Chartin. Um, I don't know. I, I I I would lean with him, and I would lean with him on the basis that they have kept him on the go. Uh, you know, he ran in November, he ran in December. He hasn't had that much time off. And I think that is by design. I think he's a big boy. He needs to be kept active. He needs to be kept in training. Um, and I wouldn't say he's had a lot of time off at all. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stick with him. But an open an open race. Yeah, I, I'm with the lads. I think if Mogul turns up and he's 90% fit, he should be winning. I can't make heads nor tails of the the Japanese farm, so I ain't going to anywhere near it. Uh, Mr. If, look, he won the Saudi Cup and he won it well. There was a miles back to to the third place. That was run at a ridiculous pace, and he he was off the bridle three out, but he kept going and going. So I mm. the only problem with that I have with him, it's not it, it, look. He has he's winning form on on the turf on good form soft and good and heavy so there's no problem what whatsoever with the ground that race had to leave a mark because that was one hell of a battle he had to put into win that so i'd be kind of veering away from at that price but if he turns up in that form he'd be hard to beat but i think that's that surely left the mark Especially on the dirt, it's not it's not easy to win on that. Um, and going the pace they did. So I'm with the lads aside with Mogul. Oh, that's a good point that Tom made. He won in December or was it November or December? And he's mm. he's they're definitely going to have this in mind after he won that, or probably in mind when he won it, and just keep him taking more for this. Um so look, yeah, Mogul, if he turns up 90, 95 percent fit, I think you take one hell of a whack and but is it a big if? He's trained by Aidan O'Brien. Are we just thinking too much into it from last year? I I think they'll have got to know him a bit more. I, I think he'll be fairly straight. Hmm. Dave, what do you think? I'm sure he's going to win a couple of group ones this year. I'm not keeping him in training for the crack, I don't think, to be honest. What What would you say to Liam for this year? Main target. The white turf. Uh, I like that. I would say the Prince of Wales is the Wednesday of Royal Ascot that they had Japan for last year, the one mile two race. Dave, um, do you even know what day these races are on at Ascot? Yeah. Like, that's insane. I know the staying race is on the Saturday, isn't it? You just don't you just you have a good few drinks Saturday. Straight Stradivarius' race. No, no. no. That's, that's the Wednesday, isn't it? Day in that two mile that's five Thursday. Race. Thursday. Yeah, the the last race is on Saturday. Yeah. 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 It's yeah, the that's Queen. A... It's the Queen Alexandria, and there's another one on the Tuesday. That's two mile two mm. or something as well. The picnics are great. That's all I know. I reckon. <laughs> Aiden kept saying he was showing speed last year. Um. <laughs> when he got him fit and stuff, I reckon he wants the triple suit on Saturday. I reckon he wants one mile two. And it'll be that race. They tend to like aim their older horses at that race. I know Duke of Marmalade won it when he stayed in training as a four-year-old and a few others. They definitely wanted Japan to win that as well last year. And then probably the Judmont and then the Ark. But I'm not sure one mile four really, really suits him. It should do by his breeding because Japan and his sister are fairly slow, but he seems very fast. Mogul? Yeah, he is fast. That's true. Would you prefer to see Pierre on him? I know Ryan's riding grand now the last few weeks again. 
He's back in the good books, is he? Yeah, he was banging in winners in England and Lingfield and Wolverhampton and all the rest of the places. So you'd expect him to keep going. Like. Just do it on the big stage and be fine. Right, moving on to the last race. The Dubai World Cup. Oh, here we go. Misty Guide is 5-2. to two. I'm, I'm presuming this is Jesus' team, not Jesus' team. Is nine to two. Military law is sixes. Salute the, the soldier is sevens. High pro, high pro tactical is tens. Uh, oh, scroll down. CBI is Todd is twelves and fourteen to one. Bigger arrests. I, 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 I've one horse that I only picked out in this. And why are you shaking your head? At? What did I make a horse? Like? I just don't know. I just like salute the soldier's name. So that's the only reason I'm picking him. I, I picked him as well. I've no other reason. I'd watch this race, but I couldn't tell you what's going to win or what's not going to win. I actually, I lashed on to him last season. I Just on the name, I backed him for just for the crack. I was bored one day. Not that you'll be backing when you're bored. Um, <laughs> I watched. Please, one gamble responsibly. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like, it was, I think it was on this card. I was, just, I was having a good day and I was just like, ah, I like his name. I'll have it. I think I only had a five run, a seven to one or something. He won. Uh, but I backed him this two times this season. Uh, he stepped up and tripped the last time up to one mile two, and they were very worried about him um, seeing out the trip. But he, he ran over a mile one the time before that, so I didn't see... like this was, These were the analysts on, on racing TV saying, oh, one mile two was going to stretch him. Jesus Christ, they didn't bother the jockey or the trainer. He out in front and gone. They'd never seen him again. If he gets a ride like that, I think he's around seven to one. He'd be really hard to catch. Um, so yeah, he's the one for me. I think he 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 might get a nice time out in the front and kick off the bend and off he goes. I think he'd be hard to beat. And I also like his name, like Dave. <laughs> yeah, salute the soldier for me, but no great reason really to be honest. You should just say, yeah, I was going to say everything Andrew said. Tom who wins. I am going to. I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna have a bet in this as well now. To be honest, um, <laughs> yeah. In for, in for a penny, in for a pound, and all that. Um, uh, look, I've got I've got one that's a bit of a bigger price, but anyone who's watching this has got to back Jesus's team, and don't don't start calling it Jesus's team and all that. If that comes around the bend in front, and I'm here. On Saturday afternoon on my own with Siobhan, I am going to give it large for come on, Jesus. Oh, come on, God. Jesus. Come on, Jesus. And um, the power of Christ compels thee. This is the, <laughs> this one I think is going to happen with Mogul. He'll be leading coming around the bend. Then. There's no doubt he stays one mile four, but I can just see, you know, that long straight and they get caught in the last hundred yards. I can see that happening to Mogul. He started looking at the big screen, looking at himself. Jeez, I need to lose a bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've picked one in this because of its name, so I'm picking one in this because of its name. Tom, and, you know what I mean? Go for it. I'm not going to yeah. back it. I don't, if, How is it that I sound like the sensible one out in this race? This never happens. You yeah, can... It's a mad race. It's a mad race, yeah. It's a mad it's race. It's a mad race. Now, I think the other angle to this race is... The colors of the suits. It, it's quite an intelligent angle. One is is pick a name that you like. Jesus's team is a fantastic name. You got to back it. And the other one is go by the owner. So you know it's really scientific. I've put lots of form and research into this. So who puts up the money? Shane Mohammed was back one of Shane Mohammed's horses. However, I think Shane Mohammed is going to have it right off this year. Because I think he's doing us a he's doing us one. He's got a five to two favorite. But if you scroll down, you'll get to Magni Coors at fourteen to one. Andre, Andre, Fab, Andre Fab trained six year old by Medaglia Doro um, has gone very well on the all weather over over in France. Uh, ran to two insanely high racing post ratings last year. Uh, one on its first start in March as a prep run for this again to a, a rating of 103 
it has an official rating of 115. Um, and actually, joking aside, I actually uh, I, I, I give it a chance. Um, as I say, it, it, it's got a nice pedigree for, for the all-weather and for the dirt. It's, it's dam was a dirt horse as far as I remember when I looked at this. No, she wasn't. It's half brother. <laughs> it's half brother. Oh, it's, it's going so well. <laughs> damn it. Damn it. Um, yeah, his two half brothers. His two half brothers were good on the on the all weather. Um, so like that that probably we won't won't do anything to uh, harm his <laughs> dad. His two half brothers are goats and his other half brother is a sheep. And... <laughs> oh. Mate, that's uh, you should see you should see some of the detail we go into buying these horses. It's all about the half brothers and the dams and stuff. Um, You're clearly yeah, not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Just takes ages to bloody get one, but um, yeah, look, this horse has only had eight runs in its life and it's still in training as a as a six year old. So I would suggest that's not for no reason and um, stick it in there with Jesus's team and. Have a bit of fun in, in the Dubai World Cup. Tom went from not backing for a month to I'm backing one horse to I'm backing two horses. Ah, fuck it. I like the name of that horse. I'm backing him as well. Oh, look at that. I like the, Hey, look, them what? colors look like our colors. I'm backing that as well. You've got like, to back. You, you can't you not could, lock back Jesus' team, lads. You've you could justify it. You could justify it if you were like, right, I really fancy that. I'm going to just, I, I'm the form is there and everything. Ah, the name is great. Sadly, not gambling. <laughs> I've no idea why it's forms like that. It's form like is. I've no idea of those form lines. I was second in a grade one last time, a group one, whatever you want to call oh, it. Oh, that I'm King's Go is a good horse. Yeah, there you go. He's been second that twice. Yeah, he's probably probably has a chance. Watch him go and win now. Guarantee it. So six horses. Tom is back and from his sabbatical. <laughs> he's a he's a good jockey on him anyway. Yeah. Who's on him? Joel Rosario. Joseph. <laughs> oh, Joseph Rosario. He's a, he's a good, he is a very good jockey. Oh, that was a good crack. Um, Naps the next best before we talk more. Dave. Uh, I want to say. You can say. My nap is River Nymph, and I want to say my next best is Mogul, but yeah, my yes. next, no, my next best is Mogul, but I, I really do think he shows a bit of speed, and I hope he don't get collared late on. Tom? Uh, my nap is Hakiki, and my next best is Subjectivist. Well, this is boring. I'm just going to ro ro reverse him. My nap is subjectivist, and my next best is Hakiki. L I was going to say lump on, but don't. Gamble responsibly, except when you're bored or you like the names. It's genuinely <laughs> or the not. Colors. Or the colors. Let's not it's forget. Not the right it's not the right time to be lumping on things. It's, it's, no. it's, an aw it's a kind of awful in-between stage of the season. The jumps are kind of winding down. There's not really on this weekend for the jumps and the flat is kind of starting to go what form it, do you have to go on you're like Ugh. it can really it can really go for you or go against you it really can yeah, it can yeah. be a bad time of year if you if you're searching for a winner a joke and aside I, I i probably am gonna back a couple of those but very <laughs> very small stakes like minimum stakes 50 euro no each way, so 100. <laughs> Each way. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. Oh, no, not each way. They're not each way races. Go go for the win only. What did you What did you do with your Cheltenham profit? Spent it on the Dubai World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> and how did that go? I am in debt. <laughs> how did you like to buy? Oh, no, I didn't go. I just bet on it. <laughs> Oh, you can do that. Yeah, lots. My my uh, Cheltenham money is going on a field shelter and some fencing for the garden. More nice. will more will follow. I'll keep I'll keep everyone updated. Um, It'll be yeah. a fence you can convert into an open ditch. As you can imagine, it's not a sheep going into the garden. It is a horse. 
Who is it? Can't tell you yet. Is you know the horse. horse. Oh, do I? Oh, yeah. give us a clue. I like it's these names. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Elvis. I knew he wasn't dead. <laughs> Back from the dead. No, no, it's not Devon. Uh, no, you'll you'll know the horse. I'll take a picture when he's here and settle in. So. Okay, tell us his name. You'll see. Like, it. Like Shargar, horse gone from Town Front Garden. <laughs> horse disappeared. <laughs> uh, anything else before we go? Any going ons over the week? Oh, well done to one of our listeners, Connor. Um, his dad and his family had a winner at Tipperary Day. Absolutely bolted up. So, uh, listeners to the show, text me about the horse. Well done. You'll get you'll you, you'll do well with that mayor, I reckon. She looks very good. Oh yeah. I have to go back bolted to Dublin up. next Thursday into that machine again. Space travel, space travel, time travel. Fuck my life. <laughs> hey, you're getting better. Yeah, it's just, it's just not it's not a nice experience. I know. But yeah, I was there today as well, and yeah, things are positive. Cool. So. Um, right, next week we have the Irish Grand National Meeting, so we're going to have a full dedicated preview to the three days. Thank God we've something to watch next weekend. Um, yeah, that's about it. We're back Sunday. We're going to do our Cheltenham Festival anti posts. Look back, we're going to go through all our anti-post picks and see how they got on and how some of them are still running. Um, I think yeah. we did okay, though. I, we done very well, I think. Off the top of my head, I think we done very well. Yeah, I, I had a couple of nice winners. and When when you're tipping at those bigger prices, anti-post, all you need is like one winner, basically. If you did it to level stakes, I know I had Calixios at 12 to 1. So if I had one point on him, I can have eleven other losers to break even. You know, so I can only think three yeah. off the top of my head. Yeah. One, yeah. one I went close. Bob at twenties, Monkfish at tens, and some Nick each way at twenty fives. The rest of them now could have just might not even run. I can't remember. Well, I remind I can't... you that I had three selections in the Gold Cup and I had the one too. I can't can remember I you, on our live um, watch thing, my Bob. That I don't even know what to call it. Yeah, I call it horse box, but I don't like it. I don't like the name. If anyone wants to come up with the name for a watch along of our horse racing, I don't really. I'm not fond of horse box. What do you think? Yeah, it's not great. No, it was kind of on goggle box, but it's just shite. Horse box is what you sell coffee out of these days, isn't it? That's all I see around the place now. It's true. The, Parked up on the side of the road. They got yeah. one in my local park. You should see the the queue for it. It's insane. I I drove. I was in was in town today. Town today, and there was a huge queue outside Lily O'Brien's, and I was like, oh, Lily O'Brien's is probably one of the nicest coffee shops in Waterford. Does anyone I'm wondering? If you're ever down it's there, go there. It's not Lily O'Brien's. Oh yeah, I keep. They're yeah. the chocolates, aren't they, Lily O'Brien's? Yeah. It used to be called Lily O'Brien's. It used to be Lily O'Brien's Chocolate Cafe. Now it's Carter's, owned by Phil Carter. Let's get good some free Phil. coffee. Ah, Phil is a good man. Good, a good man. He won't be watching this, but he's a good man. No, he's not. He won't be. Um, right. So we'll, we'll wrap it up now. So uh, as I said, we're back Sunday, and we're going to go through our anti-post video, videos, anti-post picks. And if anything amazing happens uh, in Dubai or in Doncaster, we will also talk on that. But until then, have a good week. Have a good betting weekend. And like, subscribe, tell everyone else the story of us that we're the best podcast. Not, uh, not my words. It's been said on Twitter. It's been said on the comments. It's true, though. But as any, we're back Sunday live, 8 o'clock on Facebook and YouTube. So again, lads, have a good week. Keep liking, subscribe, comment below with your best bet of the weekend. And we will talk to you live on Sunday.